How are we doing, guys? More physics for you today. I hope you're having a great day so far. Going to talk about linearizing graphs. Now, it's not something in math class you're going to do that often, but it's something that we can use in physics on a very general way to help us understand not so much the function of the line, but how we can use the variables to help linearize the graph and be able to find slope simpler. Now let me see if I can spell this linearizing graphs. Okay, cool. Here's what I mean. We, we can look at a graph that is perfectly linear, right? And that's, that's all fun and, and this is easy. We can find the slope of this by taking delta y over delta x, all right? We, we can all do this. It, it's very simple, rise over run, great. But when we start to get ourselves into situations where the graph starts to do this, now the, finding the slope of this becomes a lot more difficult. Now, granted, if you have your calculator or if you're really good in math or in calculus, okay, you can do this. But for the general physics student, this might be very difficult to do. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to understand what the proportion of y axis is to x axis to help me linearize it so that this curve is not changed. Let me give you a couple examples of what I'm talking about. This, for example, is the curve of a pendulum where this is the time in seconds it takes for the pendulum to swing back and forth right there's the pendulum and then this down here we'll call the length of the string in meters now that's really irrelevant but i want you to understand is that this is not a linear graph we have a situation here where it looks like this y-axis goes up squared in proportion to this x-axis if we look at this situation here where maybe this is an accelerating ball where this is X in meters and this is T in time, we might see that ball accelerate like this and understand that, wow, here we have a proportion where Y is gonna be proportion to X squared. And then another very, very common one is this guy right here. And we know this is when Y is equal or proportion to one over X. So I can't find the slope of these very easily. For example, like say, say I was taking this bowling ball data right here, and we're gonna do this in a lab coming up. I have some position and I watch that ball roll down the incline and it did so, and it got to certain positions at certain times. And you're like, okay, great. I have this bent curve fin. I wanna be able to, but I ask you what, is a and you're like okay well i can't do this is this slope right here as we learned in the last lesson the slope of this graph of uh, this graph of x versus t is equal to what it's equal to v okay not equal to a so to get to a we would need some v versus t graph but we don't know final information all we had was a stopwatch and a meter stick. So here's where linearizing this graph is going to help us to find A. What we're gonna do is if we say that this right here is recognized as being Y is proportional to X squared, what I can now do is I can take this and say, let's make this Y axis the X data still. But what happens in the x-axis if we were to square the time? Well, we would find out that now we have a very linear line of best fit. Now we can find the slope that is gonna equal rise over run once again, okay? And we'll be able to see that now when I have this as set up as y equals m x squared, right? Now I'll be able to understand that this a, this slope is now going to give me a information. 
Now, this is not a quadri. This is just me substituting in. So it's really saying that x position is equal to uh, the slope that I get here, t squared. So if I was to give you any sort of x information, you could tell me how long it's going to take to get to that x position by knowing the slope of this linearized graph. Once again, I know from math, my wife's a math teacher. She reminded me to tell you like, you guys recognize this as being an exponential or a quadratic. This is not a quadratic relationship. It's still the relationship of this linear line here, but we just made this time squared. Let me give you like a little bit more of an idea of this with actual data. So back to this pendulum and this proportion of y squared equal, uh, is proportionate to x. All right, now I said this is t in seconds and this is going to be length in meters. All right, now I'll take data from a lab that you're going to do later in the year from somebody from last year. Let's see, I got that data here. And if I, sell up, if I set up an L and a T where this is in meters and this is in seconds, I'll give you some lengths. And then I'll put some corresponding T's here. Once again, these are all in seconds. And the data doesn't really matter that much. I just wanna show you how we can actually find slope with this. So right now, I, if I gave you any L or T that wasn't on this graph, all right, and that's why we're doing this. Say I wanted an L that was way out over here. You would not be able to give me the corresponding, we need some sort of relationship. And we, we're pretending we don't have a graphing calculator. We're not that good at math. I don't know what I would do with this function here. But because this is Y squared over X, I know that if I T this, if I square this T, right? And I get new values. I can now graph that T squared versus that L and I will get a nice linear function. So I can now say that if I have y equals mx, which is the linear equation here, we're calling plus b, where we know, I'm just gonna say this is a zero intercept. If I can find that slope and plug it in here, and then I could substitute in this for my y information, let's use yellow, and l, oh, that's kind of, you can't really see that, for my x information, then once again, I can go back to where I was before where I can now give you any sort of L and any sort of T and you can give me the corresponding one. Here is all I did. I, I did this and found the slope to be 4.09, okay? And that's gonna be second squared per meter for all of you that are units, for units. I'm not really focused on that right now, but this is gonna be the slope. So now I've taken this, which is ugly as heck to a physics student and to me, physics teacher, and I can now say that T squared is really equal to 4.09 times L. Now, I can give you any L and you could tell me how long that pendulum is going to swing there and back. Or I could tell you how long the pendulum took to go there and back, and you will tell me the length of the string for this particular mass. And it's, this, this is going to come up over and over again. Like I said, we're going to use it next week. It's a skill that we use pretty often. Like I said, you're not going to see it too much in math because in math, you're going to have your graphing calculator and things like that. But in physics, we are definitely going to do this. We are going to use this of a bowling ball next week to help us find A. It's not exactly A. It's one half of A. We'll learn about that in the next lesson. But that's all I got for you today. I'm going to give you a worksheet. 
You guys are going to linearize a graph for me. I'm going to give you some data. Try your best. If you screwed up, please ask me questions. I am here for you. If you are not one of my physics students and you have a question about this, leave it in the comments down below. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want more tips on physics and mathematics. I'll catch you on the next one.